Uh, my name is Lawrence Ma. I'm the president for the Hong Kong Blockchain Society. So I'm very uh, honored and proud to be the moderator for this afternoon seminar on a very interesting and important topic, which is credentials in blockchain. Um, so uh, today I'm uh, very excited that we have very four distinguished speaker for this uh, panel um, who are going to be sharing with their valuable insight on, on this particular topic. Um, so maybe let me introduce the four distinguished speakers. So we have the uh, this MD Karun Mame, which is the additional secretary of the Information and Communication Technology Division. We also have uh, Mr. Rabani, who is the Man managing director of Computers Limited. Uh, Mr. Pavas, who is the director of Bangladesh Computer Council. And last but not least, uh, all, and we have Mr. Uh, Hassan Hakak. The chief operator officer of the ABN Technology uh, Limited. So, um, so let's. Uh, so perhaps we, we can start uh, by uh, maybe have each speaker maybe have some uh, maybe a five minutes introduction on on this, uh, on this particular topic. Maybe we can start with um, uh, Mr. Amin on. Um, MD, Mr. Amin, or maybe you can share some of your insight. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lawrence Ma. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here to discuss on uh, credentials in blockchain. Uh, it, uh, with me, it's my pleasure that Mr. Uh, Atik Rabbani, uh, Mr. Uh, Sanul Parvej, and Mr. Hassan and some other participants. Yeah. So credentials in blockchain is no doubt uh, very important topics considering the security. I am working as an additional secretary at IC division and one of my other responsibility is to uh, is uh, managing by uh, uh, maybe the additional secretary at IC division. Sorry. And one of my other responsibility is to uh, is any interruption uh, by <laughs> and I'm also working as a director general uh, in digital security agency under IC division. So yeah, so sorry for the disruption. So. Uh, I'm, uh, I'd like to focus on the one area about uh, digital security or cyber security. I think uh, ensuring the credentials is very, very important to maintain uh, digital or cyber security. If we use this technology, blockchain technology, we can ensure uh, the, the security in different areas. For example, if we issue a certificate, uh, we can ensure, we can uh, authenticate the issuer, uh, who issued, who signed the certificate. So we, we, we can know that, is it genuine or is it false? So if we use blockchain technology, nobody can change this certificate. So it ensures the authentication, it ensures the uh, security of these systems, of the certificates. Same time, in different areas, like health, like education, like ag agriculture, particularly in finance. In our financial transaction, uh, one of the most important thing that, uh, that uh, the people's confidence is, is vital to take or to accept digital transaction. So confidence when people uh, relax and easily use this technology, when they think that it's safe, it's, uh, it's appropriate, and there is no risk of my uh, resources or my finance. So then can people will be interested to use this. If we can use uh, this blockchain technology in financial transactions, I uh, am sure that, that we, will, um, we, um, we can ensure this um, uh, smooth, proper, and transparent, and uh, uh, protected uh, uh, transactions, and which will which will encourage the people to use these digital uh, transactions and which will ensure uh, uh, to, to boost up our 
uh, our digital commerce, our e-commerce. Government is providing uh, different supports. For example, uh, the government of Bangladesh, particularly ICT division, has formulated a blockchain strategy 2020. In this strategy, government has, uh, this strategy is identified the key areas where we should be focused and also the devised, the action plans that for each of the areas, which action should be taken and who is responsible for this taken. There are short-term, mid-term and long-term uh, action plans there. So, and government is providing other infrastructural supports. We are, you know that uh, we have established um, high-tech parks in different districts particularly Sheikh Kamal IT incubator centers, where we are providing supports to our human resources, to our ICT graduates and technical professionals to, uh, to enrich themselves, to learn and to become an entrepreneur in ICT sectors. And you will be happy to know that, that ICT division has, um, a project is going on already, uh, project has been approved. Uh, it's Sheikh Hasina Institute of Frontier Technology. In this institute, the particularly focusing on the, uh, on the innovations of fourth IR, that is no, uh, you know that uh, artificial intelligence, blockchain, um, 5G, um, big data, and all these new inventions and emerging technologies. So we'll prepare our human resources, we'll train them there, and we'll make a professional pool of uh, people in Bangladesh to establish a innovative and knowledge-based economy. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Andy Kimei. Perhaps we can um, continue with Mr. Ravani. Maybe you can share some of your view or your, uh, on this topic. Sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, yeah. Of course, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty <laughs> fundamental blockchain uh, supporter and a maximalist in the decentralized the future of uh, blockchain. Uh, of course, you know, the world is fraught with uh, the biggest problem. I mean, we cannot distinguish between the facts and the fakes. I mean, uh, you know, and uh, with the advent of technology, of course, you know, technology, bias technology is good for us, but technology can also, we can have, you know, fake videos, this, that, and other. So I could be, you know, talking, but, you know, somebody else talking. So, I mean, we are, we are fraught with this, uh, uh, this unfortunate situation that, you know, certificates could be fraudulent, you know, the, the, the well, anything. So all facts and the, the, so, I, mean, I think the world has, of course, you know, we started digitization, started, you know, back in 40s, 50s, of course, to, it has really come up with, a, you know, I, I mean, a lot of um, efficiency driving, productivity, driving uh, methodologies we have disrupted. I mean, IT, computers, you know, the mainframe and the mini and the PCs and the networks and everything that we have had. And then the 90s came, internet promised a lot. So, you know, but you know, I mean, so we have had a lot of uh, information, IT technology evolution and revolutions and which has really brought tremendous uh, benefit to the society, but still, but still, you know, I mean, the, the promises were not kept. I mean, the promises was that, you know, it would be a democratized system. It would be a system in which the truth will be upheld. And uh, unfortunately, you know, of course, it's nobody's fault. It's the evolution which happens. And then, well, out of, uh, of course, you know, back in 90s, 91, I think, you know, there was a, a, a company called Surety by uh, Stornetta and, and Haber, they're both ex Bell Labs people, cryptologists. I mean, they, they, they actually were the first to, uh, you know, to certify digital documents. They would take digital documents, they would, I mean, hash it, and then keep the hash somewhere. And then they thought, you know, who would be the custodian of the hashes? So what they did was they used to publish it in, in the New York Times. And I think it's still being done. But, you know, do they publish all the hashes of all the documents? No. They actually have a, you know, it's like a Merkle tree or whatever, you know, hashes of hashes. So the hash is a kind of a reference point which gives the credential to the document. And if s later on somebody wishes to see the document and wants to see if it is um, the same as before, he can do another hash 
and if it matches. So back in 90s, that, that kind of thing happened. And 2008 was a watershed moment because you know the financial collapse, Lehman Brothers, 158 year old company, the god of centralization collapsed. And then 31st October 2008, this pseudonymous person, persons, male, female, whatever, Satoshi Nakamoto, you know, kind of brought many technologists together, cryptography, digital signature, and you know, hashes and all that, and prevent double spend. So blockchain was the reversibility thing, and the, the Bitcoin was the sustainable. So, you know, I mean, the, the, in, that, in, that, in that exercise, in that very elegant, I mean, I consider Bitcoin as a very elegant technology, a very ethical technology, very transparent, very uh, kind of, um, you know, most, most ethical, most transparent and, and open. And uh, the world has never seen without any intermediaries, without any government. Because from ages, from the dark ages, I mean, from the old ages, we had interactions between people. And then came the agencies, the banks, the government, because, you know, we grew bigger. And we didn't, we didn't know how to, how to handle that because, you know, agencies were central point of corruption, central point of fairness. I mean, depending on how you look at it, but power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And then he found out, so credentialing lies in the, in the, in the, in the I think in, in the root is embedded in blockchain. So if I, if I, if I feel, if I, if, if I go deep, if I see blockchain, blockchain is about, you know, credentialing. I mean, whatever you say, the transactions, the documents. So I think it's, it's inherent in it. But you know, how do you, now the question is, how do you actually ensure that you know in this present day world, we can actually uh, have a system in which credentialing or the proof of the document, everything is kind of ensured. I mean, the more you become a private blockchain, the less secure it is, less, I, I, I mean, if, if there are 100 people doing something, that's less manipulation uh, kind of, you know, you tend to, it, it, you cannot manipulate that very easily, but if you have two people. So, so in, our, in our world, where we have a lot of um, systems, like university systems, like, you know, as uh, our previous speaker spoke about, you know, all kinds of business solutions, supply chain, the man, and so, uh, they're all, you know, we have to have confidence on the document, confidence on the facts. So credentialing comes as a, basic theme. And I, 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 I completely uh, acknowledge this. And I also, you know, when I talk about credentialing, I was talking about credentialing in a university sphere, and then said, I mean, who then will dictate what credentials that I put in into the blockchain? So there comes the validation and all that, but who does the validation? So these are the points that there can be uh, a third party, I mean, uh, well, auditor, whatever. I mean, so of course, you know, the, 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 the question of how to really validate documents will come in when you have a blockchain kind of uh, implementation, in a, mostly in a private uh, setting. So, I mean, I, I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, we must embrace blockchain. I mean, credentialing, provenance, traceability, these are the things, transparency, I mean, visibility, you know, you have visibility in the whole system. So it's, it's easier for everyone to feel confident about the system. So, I mean, I, I'm really all for that. But, you know, we must be, I mean, I was talking to the, 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 the power ministry, I mean, yesterday, I mean, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and we said that, you know, of course, you know, you, you, we, we need to have a low carbon, people-centric power system, but we need to also give prosumer, you know, producers and consumers. I should be able to have some, you know, solar panel or something and grid I could take off, take electricity from and then also sell it. And then we might have, you know, energy certificates, low carbon energy. So there needs credentialing. So all these kind of things are coming up and all these kind of things have to be fairly implemented to make it people centric. So in a nutshell, blockchain has come about, you know, lots of, trepidations, lots of resistance maybe, because it is, a far, it is far removed from anything we have seen. It's a decentralized, you know, disintermediated thing. 
but for our own humanity's sake, our own survival, to make humans more human, so that you know we all we all seek the truth, we all seek you know the credentials that are the, the true credentials, the university certificates and all. But so so I think it's a, it's a fundamental it's a premise. I mean it's like in you know, a fundamental human right. I mean if I pr produce a certificate and if somebody says it's been faked, so the society somehow has failed. That you know it has brought up a system in which you know the certificates cannot be de de uh, uh, de depended upon. So that's my initial comment. I'll c come back. Uh, okay. To Thank you very project. much, Mr. Raman. Thank, Thank you for you. the sharing. So may, may, maybe we'll continue, with Mr. Powers. Maybe you can share your view on, on this topic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, firstly. I would like to thank my senior sir, Honorable Additional Secretary of ICT Division and my uh, other colleagues, panelists and audience. You will be uh, proud to know that in Bangladesh, for the first time, we, um, in Bangladesh Computer Council, we introduced certification system in blockchain technology. This is first uh, example. And uh, we, we are trying all these certification uh, so systems, solutions, uh, from uh, several uh, universities, private or public, uh, we are trying to uh, convince them to issue the certificate in blockchain technology. As we know, in international job markets, most of the foreign employer uh, frequently filled out that uh, the authentication of this certificate. Uh, this, uh, if it is possible to issue the certificate using blockchain technology, then we will be uh, able to uh, satisfy them. This, our certificate are not uh, fake. And uh, I think most of the hassles, those are facing uh, our students, our job seeker in the international market, we, that problem will be solved. The beauty of blockchain, that is, uh, and credentials, it's called that it is a self-secured system solution. There, there are wide scopes to use this in supply chain management, in fintech also, as we know. And another thing is that unemployment and foreign earning are most challenging area of Bangladesh uh, current situation. And uh, in international job market, as well as freelancing marketplaces, millions of his, uh, workers, millions of freelan freelancers are working, only taking a few days or a few months training Years back, out of my personal interest, I have completed a few courses on blockchain technology. As a part of the training, I have, uh, I had to have a, uh, I had to have, uh, make a project by graphics card, a few graphics card, powerful graphics card and motherboard and to, I have to make a small lab, blockchain lab. I connected it to the international uh, cryptocurrency network. And after running that, I am so surprised. It's so easy. It's so easy. And then I uh, search for current situation in international uh, cryptocurrency market 
at this time, there are 1,400 plus cryptocurrencies is uh, running on the market, and it's a market of 1,200 uh, $1, billion dollar, 24/7 market, and billions of freelancers are working. Staying at their home, only making or buying one or two or three or a few minor machines. They are getting money, not buying or selling the bitcoins. They are getting money as a commission in exchange of their uh, validation of transactions happening in the crypto network then I think it's a great scope for our unemployed generation. They can earn money as like China by assembling ASIC miner, GPU miner, by making those. We can earn money by exporting those. We can earn money or they can uh, they can earn money by making one or two machines or a few machines at their home, is, home palaces. And I think if we get share from $1,200 billion market, we can get 2 to 3 percent share, then our foreign currency earning might be six to seven billion dollar, which is higher than garments export sector. There is uh, so many other scopes. And in our land management systems, we can project cases, clashes, forgeries, and link the land transfer processes only using this, script, uh, this blockchain technology. There is a scope. We uh, think in uh, good governance, we can use blockchain technology in rendering service to the citizen, service to the people, and to establish good governance. Obviously, it's a it's an excellent technology which will dominate not in fourth industrial revolution. Expert says it will dominate with other technologies, AI, robotics, IOE. In next phases, that's fifth industrial revolution. Expert says it's not a revolution, industrial revolution. It's society five. And we should be prepared for that revelation also. And we think this, is, uh, this seminar discussion obviously help us to uh, be prepared for that revelation also. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you very much, Mr. Thomas. Thank you for your sharing. So maybe uh, let me go on to Mr. Hassan Haku. Maybe can you share your your um, your view on this topic? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence Ma, and thank you, uh, my senior speakers. Actually, uh, two of my senior speakers are from the government side, and. Uh, um, I have Mr. Mr. Atikar Abrani, who is a learned person in this field. And I am basically a person who is there in the execution end. We are ADN group, continuously embracing technologies. Blockchain is something which is inevitable. And uh, we should not miss it at this time, what I can say, because uh, 
we may not get enough time to retake. Let me, let me ask you one question. Just ask yourself, who don't have identity? In, in, in the audience, there are people. Is there any people who is, any person who is not having identity? Do you know when we are sitting here talking about credential in blockchain, uh, are we having safe identity? Is it used by someone else or not? Is it something which we are preserving uh, with our level best effort? I guess not. Because when we are sitting here, our national ID probably in use. When we are sitting here, our other digital credentials are used by hackers, but we cannot do anything because it is not peer-to-peer. -peer. It is not a shared ledger. So here comes the blockchain. Blockchain, in our case, our day-to-day -day life, when we are talking about business hours, we are focusing on banking solution. We are focusing on customer interaction. We are focusing on large-scale system integration. Authentication is the basic and fundamental things here. Because if you want to open a bank account, how bank can check the credential if not Purichai was there? Right now, ICT ministry introduced already a few years back, Poricho is there. That can be a tool for, that can be a tool for validation, but it is one way. Why not it can be a tool which can be validated among the resources in a peer-to-peer -peer network? Now, question about those people who wants to go, f go abroad and have their study? I guess there will be some in this audience. You have gone through the ECA process. Education credential assessment. Do you, you probably know, you are the only person who knows how difficult it is because you need to go door to door and then g collect the paper. But thanks to ICT ministry, just came to know that they have introduced a portal, a solution where the certificates can be digitally authenticated. So I guess credential in blockchain is something we need to, we need to act accordingly because it's all about the ID and the resources which we are using or let other people using with unknowingly. The issuer, the subject and the validator need to be synced together in a peer-to-peer -peer network. And I think uh, I can see the business size in Bangladesh because this is the non-existent revenue. Because there is no third-party service provider who can validate the resources and give you the clear essence or certification that it is the certificate which is issued. So. Let's embrace it. Blockchain is something which is inevitable. And uh, I guess we have many more miles to go. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Okay, um, thank you um, for everyone, uh, all of you sharing your view. So let me um, continue by asking a question um, so anyone of you can answer. I think um, uh, talking to a lot of people who are working on or who are looking at this credentials or identity of blockchain, one of the most uh, asked questions is, why should I trust this? How, how, how do I still trust this? Is the blockchain enough? Do I need other things? Do I um, other things other than the blockchain? How, how do we build the trust? Why should I trust this? Um, please, uh, anyone of you want to take this question? No, of course. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, yeah. Well, I can have a go at it. Yeah, please, please, I mean, please I'm to, yeah. I mean, the trust is a very, very, um, you know, very subjective word. I mean, um, so 
For example, I, mean, I think I did mention here that, um, say for example, I take a, you know, a concrete example that all the universities in Bangladesh or in Dhaka, they have agreed to be on a chain, education chain, on which they will, um, you know, there will be a, a, a facility for uploading the student certificates, and they'll have some mechanism, some governance mechanism, which could include the universities, the UGC or whatever, to validate the certificate or the data uploaded. Now, I mean, it is not fail safe. Now, it is not, I mean, but you know, if, if, it, is, if it is only one university doing it, and if we, I mean, for example, you know, we, we have in the university system where we have externals coming in and assessing the individual. So X university will send to Y university. So I think this is better than uh, the present system, but it doesn't guarantee that, you know, whatever we have put in into the system is, is in fact uh, the right certificate or the true certificate. But I think this, yes. is a, this is a question of governance here. I mean, the governance so that, mm -hmm. have to be the thing which will ensure that, you know, all the universities and if it is, and uh, of course, you know, I mean, if they have, if they have, I, I mean, this, this, this chain, the, the chain administration, I mean, the chain could be a group of chains where the public chain sits at the bottom and uh, upwards, you know, there are private chains. And once a document is verified, it is put into a public chain like Bitcoin or whatever, so that, you know, no one can tamper with that hash. So I think there is a, except, except absolutely true public chains, no other chain can actually claim to, to have, uh, you know, input the right system. The only guarantee is if it is kind of a governance of many validators, that gives you some assurance. In supply chain, if I'm a farmer, so whatever I have put in, I have, you know, the fishes that I farm, the chicken that I farm. Now, if it is not fact, if it is falsified, then, you know, something is getting wrong into the chain. But of course, if it is verified by many and it is, you know, instantly updated or whatever, there is a chance that, you know, we will deter away from putting in false info because that is not going to serve my purpose. So I think there is no guarantee that the trust you seek will be, it will be achieved in a private or permissioned blockchain but, uh, you know, it's better than what we have now. So I think, and of course, two is better than one. Twenty is better than two. So I think in that way, I mean, if you have a, 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 the practice of having a blockchain layer, a blockchain representation of the data, and then, of course, you know, that is cast in stone through some, you know, uh, hashes and all that. So that will give some 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 satisfaction the trust level that you require that it is uh, it is it is valid but you know of course absolute f faith in it is not possible it is not theoretical it is theoretically breakable so we have to the governance mechanism here has to play the role yeah thank you okay thank you um other panelists want to okay share share this on this question uh, just uh, I'd like to say, as uh, Mr. Rabani uh, properly mentioned about certificate uh, validation or authentication. But if we don't focus on only one or two cases, if we think about the whole scenario of the society, there are lots of other areas we will use this blockchain technology. The consumer or user, the whole po population of the country. So we have to think that to trust, to build up trust among the common people is not very challenging. The first thing I think that transparency. People have to 
believe that who is using my document? Is it properly they are using the document? What purpose they are using this? Or why I will go to the blockchain technology? Why should not I go to the other options? So in that case, we have to, I think, we have to develop a systematic strategy or approach that uh, one, of the, uh, one of the tools or techniques can be that policy support. As I earlier mentioned about a strategy formulated by the government IC division. But I think uh, to use blockchain, it's, it's a, no doubt a new concept in our country. And still now it is not widely practiced. If we, uh, we, if we um, insert mm -hmm. the Sorry. provisions of using four tier innovations in our uh, policy documents, for example, in ICT, next ICT policy. At the moment, we have got ICT policy 2018. So in next ICT policy, we can insert the provisions of using blockchains and other uh, disruptive technology, how we'll use this. And then we have, I think, uh, the, uh, Mr. Rabbani and Mr. Hassan and my colleagues, they can suggest that what would be the strategy, how to reach to the people, the, the user, to, to build up trust. Just to build up trust is not, a, I, I earlier mentioned, that it's not a very challenging to the common people. It's again and again, again and again, you have to pursue, but what way, how to reach to them? It's, this area is very technical. We can, at first, yeah, I, I agree with them that at first, uh, some areas can be prioritized and the board government and private sector can use this and uh, on its successful operation, people will be encouraged and trust will be built and uh, this process will be continued continued and we can uh, use blockchains and other disruptive technologies in our day-to-day -day life. So uh, that's from, uh, from my side. Thank you. Th thank you. Um, yeah. uh, Mr. Norisma, uh, if I yeah. may add some. Yeah, please. Uh, now, question about trust. Um, le let's see the, the face of the checkbook checkbook which was there in the past uh, don't have the MICR number. So what is MICR number? It, it en ensured that uh, this is authentic. And uh, we are now placing check and uh, without the number that checkbook paper is not accepted by any teller. So I guess uh, um, previous speaker rightly mentioned that we need, to, we need to find ways to ensure that it is trustworthy. In an individual body, could be the right authority who could ensure the trust, like uh, SSC certificates, yes. secondary school certificate. That could, be, that could be uploaded to the blockchain by the board office, and that could be there uh, with the uh, ICT ministry portal, HSC higher school school, uh, school certificate, certificate, mark sheet, tabulation sheet, all those things can be uploaded over there. So question about trust can be ensured that it is the portal which is blockchain certified. It is the authority who is the issuing authority for the certificate and it is the user for whom the certificate is issued. So we can build a platform in a private sector or in the government sector, offer the services to the end customer and ensure that authentic document can be delivered to the right user. Like when we are recruiting people, we usually see that uh, the uh, CV got many information. He worked there, he, got, he worked here, there, and a lo lot of things. Lot of certification, lot of awards, lot of, lot of credentials, which are all written in black and white. But are you in a position to check back that? Well, we will get the trust. If not, we are uploading this thing to blockchain, or if not, we are 
we are getting the facility to check the document by connecting with the same portal which is readily available at this moment. So I guess trust is something which can be built eventually if we are start practicing now. Uh, that is the only way in my, in my thought. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, that's a, a follow up on, the, on this. I think, I think, uh, I think um, some of you rightly point out that you need to trust in the government and same thing. Um, and also, trust itself is very contextual. And for example, in finance, when you talk about trust, the ways of school it could be different. So, for example, in uh, a given example in Canada, what they're doing is they are having this so called trust framework where they would define what they, what they call level of trust. Uh, what, what does that mean? That means that uh, let's say you have a someone issuing credential, okay, and they will they, pro they propose that um, there are certain processes they have to go through, and and then uh, it's very it's very well very transparent. Everyone knows what the process are, and from looking at what they have done, they will assign something called level of trust. Okay, let's say you have examined this, or your your or your thing are from the so called wooden source, or, or the issue is the government, then you have to have a high level of trust. Whereas if you don't have, it's all still okay, but the level of trust is lower. Okay. So that somewhere somewhere to measure this. Then of course you might ask, uh, then you will ask, okay, how am I sure that these people have done what they claim they have done? Then they also propose that you may have auditor that audit all these people maybe once a year to see whether they actually have uh, do this uh, uh, a binding to this uh, what they say. So that um, the point of this is that so that you can compare when I say this is more trustworthy than other, it's because I have something that can compare with them because they have gone through certain things at the level of trust. Uh, for, for example, the example that uh, uh, the speaker have given uh, about applying to school to uh, oversee, for example. Um, for example, it's okay that in Bangladesh, probably you have a certificate issued by uh, Bangladesh University and maybe the education uh, uh, division has solved that everyone's okay. But let's say both oversee, how do I, how do, when you're overseas, then how would the overseas people trust when you do cross border, right? Which are people are not familiar, as they say, with the Bangladesh. The how, would, why would they trust this, right? So, so in other words, you, you need some kind of um, governance to, to see how do I, why, uh, what is the level? Okay, this is someone that people go say that I know exactly what you have done so that I know uh, I can believe. And then at some point, as you widely point out, it's not just technology because uh, things on the blockchain still have to be input by people. Right? And how do I know that the people have input the, uh, the correct, the right thing, although they haven't uh, input some garbage in there. Again, so this is part of the governance and which, which rightly point out. So it's just, it's not, so it's not all the technology, it's still it, all, all, the, all the governance. So uh, with that, I, I'm interested to see, I mean, would this something that um, in Bangladesh, something they will think of you know, having a somewhat trust framework to build this kind of level of trust? Would that be something that you think would make big sense in Bangladesh? I guess, uh, Mr. Lawrence Ma, yeah. um, that is something we all agreed uh, in our uh, till now discussion mm -hmm. that this is something what we need to embrace. And uh, yeah, uh, authentic certificate or mm -hmm. authentic paper need to be uploaded and that need to be validated by proper authority. So, challenge is the genesis because... Right. You did it as a genesis, correct? Yep. Yeah, challenge yeah. is the genesis because... Where, where, where's the genesis? Yeah. yeah, that is the first box. The first yeah. block which yeah. is uh, created by yeah. the issuer. So, whether that remains authentic or not that is something we need to we need to look at I, I think the challenge is not just the first part is how do i know the issuer i can trust the issuer do i have to validate the issuer uh, yes uh, it's uh, <laughs> it is the issuer but uh, um, I, i'm going back to the yeah. last discussion it is there ict ministry has already yeah. developed a blockchain 
uh, for mm -hmm. uploading the certificate. Let's talk about the right. education certificate now. Mm -hmm. uh, days to come, we, we will be adding few more things because there will be private blockchain uh, mm -hmm. also there in the picture who would be offering it as a SaaS model, so that is a uh, service model or platform as a service model or infrastructure as a service model. So we are there to introduce that. But uh, up till now, what we are having, that is what, what we are having. So yeah, ICT ministry is having the solution. The mm -hmm. uh, education board can upload their record to the blockchain. And the certificate user can be giving the certificate to necessary people with time limit or without time limit so that they can be evaluated accordingly. So authenticity should not be a challenge in that case. Otherwise, the genesis should be questioned all the time. Right. I think one question was that uh, regarding cross-border, <laughs> cross-border issue. Uh, normally what we do, our cross-border issues, we have got international cooperation with different countries. So I don't know in international blockchain uh, practice, is there any standard and what is the, um, what is the role of the government in different countries? I think whenever we'll go to uh, oper operational in this blockchain activities in our country, we have to think of that, that how the international co cooperation will be developed with different countries and can ensure that I think what is the best practice? My question is also that how at the moment whether any other those countries are using this, uh, what they're following, the, the, the best practice. If Mr. Lawrence McCann mentioned, I'd we'll be happy. Thank you. No, sure. I think, you know, I mean, the challenge is if you are in a community peer to peer, I mean, is the system beneficial to all? I mean, can you, I mean, you see, the reason we collaborate is when we find win-win situation for everyone. I mean, it is a pretty selfish system. I mean, uh, so, you know, no one does it for charity. So if you want to get a group of people, group of universities, government agencies together, it's not just that, you know, we want to build the truth. I mean, it's because everyone interest must be served. Now, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, we must correct our things. I mean, what BCC has done is a single-handedly BKICT. I mean, I don't know who validates that upload, uploading of certificates. I mean, I mean, we must recognize the issues, as, as you mentioned, as I mentioned also, I mean, the governance. And the governance, yeah. if, if, if I'm in a supply chain situation and I have 10 stakeholders, and they don't see that you know it is of benefit to me to be in the chain, it won't work. I mean, IPDC has done a kind of a blockchain in Bangladesh in which they, you know, the people who apply for loan to IPDC for a contract they may have received from ADN or Grameen phone. So IPDC does not have to send people on scooters to find out if that order is valid or his other things are valid, it is on the chain. But if they are not participants willing to come in, and so, you know, it won't work. So I think, I mean, as we mentioned, I mean, as, and I, I keep mentioning this, the technology is very simple. I mean, the technology, no, it's not simple, I mean, very easy. I mean, if you have 10,000 blockchain developers here who are, you know, very deep, skills in hyperledger fabric or ethereum and whatever that's one layer but the other layer is the the top people like mr amin and others have to co have to collaborate and find out if government can all the i don't know 50 ministries 45 ministries i mean can collaborate to find out to change so that you know it is it is of common interest to mm. to to have the truth out there in the open I mean, in the in that private environment. So, the governance is is the crucial thing, and of course, I mean, um, uh, you know, as I think it was mentioned before, I mentioned before, 
I mean, you know, I mean, there are like, like chain link. I mean, Oracle feeds, feeds from outside into the chain. Yeah. How do you ensure the authenticity of it? I mean, common sense dictates, if I get some information from one people and from two people, from three people, I take an average. So, or, or you know, if three people say the same thing, it's the, is the, we, we, we consider that as a fact. So I think you know, that kind of thing is, are happening also in the blockchain space. So we must not fool ourselves into thinking that you know, implementing blockchain in one organization, this, that, and other will ensure authenticity of the, because you know, we have to be aware of the limitations of it and you know, the trilemma. I mean, less decentralized, less secure, Less secure meaning that you know it could not be. It may be a false thing which has come in. So I think you know we must understand the technology. We must understand the governance mechanism, and we must will together to have a system in which everybody benefits from that. I mean, if all the 50 universities don't think they'll be benefiting from an education chain in which, and of course the the other point is the members of the chain may have their own system. If a university has a very defined digital IT-based system for, for giving certificates, then that is a system difficult to break rather than a manual system. So, you know, there are all kinds of issues which can come in. And it's the cooperative, it's the, it is the people in the governance who can actually ensure that such things will happen. I mean, blockchain on its own won't be a solve all everything. It has to be supported by all other things, including other technologies, AI and IoT plus, you know. So for example, if North South, if, if one university has a very good system of, you know, issuing credentials through a very systematic way, and the other university does not, then of course, you initially, that the weakest link is your best link. So initially, you know that you know in the whole group there are people who who are, whose processes are not that efficient. So I think it's a, it's a big call, and you know I I I I think you know as I mentioned, it's more about the 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 the, the management people, the governance people have to understand it, have to co collaborate. I mean I talked about yesterday. I talked about the energy web chain, which is for low carbon in a in a ministerial s setting in the power ministry. And I said, you know, they, they, their sponsors or their people who started this are energy specialists, are energy domain specialists. I mean, if you do not have that, then, you know, some, you know, blockchain enabled, blockchain skilled people cannot, young people cannot come and do that. And you have to, then also knock on people like Shell, other huge energy companies to, to, to have a dialogue, to have a collaboration so that they also see the benefit of it. It could be time consuming, but we have to do that. So, I mean, implementation of blockchain in a setting in government, as you say, is a difficult task, but it should be started with the top government agencies, the uh, management people, the secretaries and whatever. You know, uh, 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 unless you have that, it won't happen. So that's my comment. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Maybe, Maybe I just follow, follow up on this. It's different country has different way to approach this. Some obviously are very government driven, like a top down. Uh, some are more bottom up, driven by the, uh, the common sector. Uh, or some was like collaboration between uh, the industry and the government. Uh, in your view, what, what do you think is, at least for, let's say, in the Bangladesh context, what do you think is, should be the, uh, the right approach to this? You mean uh, the role of government or the yeah, is it should, should, be, should be top down for to drive this thing, or should it be bottom up? Say in the U.S. is more bottom up, and some country is like uh, more like a collaboration between the government and the uh, private sector together establish the, the governance. Yes, well, well, if I may go first, I think you know, I mean, in Bangladesh, government has to play a big role because you know our, mm -hmm. you see, I mean, 
uh, if I use blockchain in my own organization and I have a private organization and I have collaboration with few, it won't have an impact. If I want to really do have an impactful uh, implementation, maybe the public mm -hmm. finance optimize. You know, we are look, calling for no waste, zero corruption, all that. Public finance, you know, people, government people, they study, they go abroad to, to, to have efficient public finance system. But the tools of efficiency are there. So, you know, if government really wants to, so public finance is one, our supply chains are one, our government, any administration, anywhere their transactions, to have an impact. I see, I mean, I mean it's not much point, you know, uh, uh, you know, having small cases, this, that, and other, which we have to have a impactful implementation. And for that, you see, I mean, countries like Western countries, you know, maybe Hong Kong included, Japan, all, you know, the wheels of prosperity has already been running for so long. And uh, for countries like ours, unfortunately, not... But, but not for information, Hong Kong is also quite a top-down approach. <laughs> the government's <laughs> driving it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, I mean, for countries like ours, I mean, uh, well, <clears throat> no fault of ours. I mean, we have poor governance, poor uh, management, and of course, not much of a legal, healthy legal system. So we need to, we need to uh, embrace this tool and embrace this tool not as one. It is a team game. Blockchain is a team sport. Blockchain is a team right. technology. And blockchain, blockchain is a community technology. I mean, it's no point, you know, me being a very blockchain evangelist or whatever, just, you know, go ahead and it has to be a whole effort. So we, we have to, so I mean, I mean, I mean, personally, that's the reason from 2017 I have been provocating, I mean, propagating this thing into ministries and all. At least, you know, the satisfaction that, you know, we, we want to really get people going for this. And uh, so I think in Bangladesh, government, private, of course, includes, in, included, but government is so huge here, you see, co compared to, of course, private organizations are there, but you know, if government systems can be put right, it will have a tremendous effect on the whole mechanism of the country. E emancipation of the country, SDG goals, your ESG goals now, whatever. So I think, you know, it's a government-led initiative which I think should be done for countries like ours. But, but just interestingly, I mean, uh, we look at Europe, like, uh, which is some of the most, uh, like, like the Netherlands, right? They also found that when they want to drive this um, identity uh, blockchain base, um, they realize that a, a well, I mean, this brings the next question is that in the private sector, I mean, a lot of people complain, well, what's the business model? How do I make money of this identity? For the private sector, how, how would one make money? I think a lot of people are struggling with that. And because of that, a lot of people have trouble getting funding in the West if you want to do a blockchain based identity. I mean, um, the the VC are not interested, I mean, because there's a, um, because a, it's not clear how you're going to make money out there. So, what is your view on that for private company? Like, how do you make money on this? Yeah, I mean, you see, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, in 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 Bangladesh, of course, you know. Let me get to another point. We need, I mean, if I had an Aladdin's lab, I mean, if you yeah. had, you know some kind of policy support or policy certainty or regularity certainty mm. that, you know, researching in cryptocurrency or doing projects in blockchain is okay. Then all these youngsters from the age of 16 or whatever could dirty their hand into doing all kinds of things, deep dive into existing projects and see if they can make a, a different blockchain uh, project or whatever. But that is not happening when I mean, we are we are you know we are saying that government must give an environment in which the the, the people can mm. experiment then private would have played a part i mean for example in india i mean despite all the resistance polygon has come up from india polygon is a layer two chain on ethereum these two guys they live in india but you know their company is based in United States. Mm -hmm. have, so, you know, it's like a layer two to Ethereum and it's a billion dollar, you know, 
project, Sunil Wall and some other guy. So in India, and there is also a coin DCX, which is a crypto exchange. Somehow in India, it is- Yeah, yeah but I, want, I specifically system. want to talk about companies who do identity. So <laughs> they're, they're not doing identity. No, How so do you want to make money? In Bangladesh, yeah. the private yeah. sector would have played yeah. a part if there were more mm -hmm. regularity certainty, regularity mm -hmm. uh, 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 support, policy support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Other uh, speaker want to have a say on this? I mean, yeah, Mr. Lorisma, I have one question yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, can you tell me what is the process uh, certifying document in Hong Kong? Certifying document. Yes. You mean certifying document? Yeah. How to so certify document? Say, say notarization of a document. Yeah, right now, either through notarization, said, yeah, or yeah, yes. things like that. Notarization. Yeah. Go yeah. to a lawyer or one of these not notary. Yeah. Yeah, is it is it blockchain supported? No, no. They have Definitely not. Private sector business scope. Because so you think that will be um, this a way one can make, make money, money how, by doing how that? How you authenticate that. That, that that document is authentic? Hmm. How you authenticate? So basically, you you may go go and bring uh, some copy, and then the lawyer may look at it, and then and it says, oh, okay. Look okay, I'll sign on it. Yeah. Right, you are Mr. Norinsma. There comes the private business scope because we are still working on papers. So yes. my certificate getting notarized or certified by a barrister or advocate of high court, Supreme Court, or any yeah. court of law. Yeah. And we need to take two copies with us. One, yeah. the copy that remain with the lawyer and second copy, which is attested by the lawyer or notarized by the right. lawyer. So when we submit this document to you for validation, will you go back to the lawyer? Uh, sorry, when you go back will to the lawyer. Will you go back to the lawyer and check whether my document was authentic or not? No, I probably believe on the signature. Yeah, the there, there comes the business of private sector because yeah, yeah. Uh, the the way Mr. Atik Rabbani just said, if we can use the uh, resources from 16 years mm -hmm. onward who are developing the blockchain, if we can mm -hmm. prepare a system with the support of the government, with, which is authenticated, certified, and assured by the government, we can we can offer all these things as a service model. Documents can be notarized, documents can be certified in an online system, in a peer-to-peer -peer network, credential will be secure, hashtag would be ensured, and document cannot be changed other than the previous hashtag. So that is the beauty of blockchain, and uh, there comes the private sector business scope because in other yeah. part of the globe, these documents are validated based on certain charges and let, yes let, let, let me just give you put this to you uh, so last year we were doing some project with hong kong central bank and may bank so the same problem come up is um, i think one of the challenges right now for uh, banks um they they want to do um especially in the COVID situation right people don't want to go to the bank branches where right, to do all these things so we want to do it online um, but when it come to um, corporate kind of open, let's say corporate account, opening, they cannot do it because they, they need certain document, right? Uh, like certain certificate corporation or company corporation, which right right now they cannot really do it purely online. Right? Either they they ask what for a original copy or a certified copy, right? And when you do when you certified copy, you have to bring so you have to mail in and things like that. So you're absolutely right. I mean, that's an opportunity. But then when you ask the bank, okay, if we were to provide a service, okay, um, will, you, will, you, will you accept that? And then the banks, and at least in Hong Kong, they say that if the thing is certified by something like um, a government related, they, they will take it. But by someone else, unless these, the regulator says, okay, they, are, they, are, they probably don't want to take it. Uh, can you can you come back one more time? 
Yeah, so so absolutely right. I mean, this is the opportunity. But then in the Hong Kong situation, right, where the same thing happened, uh, we, we discussed a uh, use case. The bank was saying that if the thing was notarized by a government department, they they, they will accept that no uh, no reservation. But if it's from a private sector, they have reservation. Unless Hong Kong MA, the central bank, say this is okay. Actually, actually, this is what we, we were talking about for last one hours, that uh, the blockchain, yeah. the authentication should be supported by government. It is not, yeah. not the private sector initiative only. Like uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Adhikar just mentioned, that when you have asked question, that will it be a public initiative or private initiative? The answer was public initiative, because it has to mm -hmm. be endorsed by the government first. So yeah. the platform need to be prepared. We private sector are always embracing new technology. We are there to activate right. the service in a service model. We are there to uh, offer the service to enterprise, end customer, student, user end, whatever the category it may be. But it has to be, it has to be from the uh, legal authority, which is- Now, of course, this is very specific. This is about bank account opening which is um, the bank are under regulated, they're regulated. But if it's like education, probably uh, the requirement is much less, right, it's for education. Because yeah. we're talking about bank, which is probably the high, most regulated you know, sector. Right, absolutely right. Um, let me switch another question, a topic is, when people look at all this system, right, they always look at three things. Um, uh, authentication, which we talk about a lot, privacy, and confidentiality, okay. And this three, in some sense, they cannot coexist at the highest level at the same time, because just to give an example, if you want authentication, right, you probably need to share some information to authenticate. But then when you do that, you probably lose some privacy, okay. And seems like you need a balance, and what, what is your take on this? This three things, how do we balance them? Privacy, authentication, and confidentiality. Actually, uh, that is the core things of blockchain. Uh, we are always talking about blockchain because today we are here in Blockchain yeah. Olympiad. Yeah. Um, authentication, privacy, and confidentiality. Authentication yeah. we talked about. Uh, privacy, we never talked about. Confidentiality, yeah. we never talked about. Now, question yeah. about the user, the issuer, is the authentic authenticator to authenticator of the certificate or the paper or any sort of identification. Now, how about the privacy? Yeah. Say I am having my national ID card. I am giving it in a very uh, natural, neutral manner. I am not a technical person. I can barely check my mail. So um, here. There are a lot of people in the audience. So if you are talking about issuer, issuer issues the identity. Right. How the con uh, confidentiality is uh, ma maintained? The passport copy is probably in the photocopier center. The NID card copy might be also photocopied once, and it is there in the photocopy center, and uh, people are using it right and left. And what about the confidentiality? In current environment, other than blockchain, these three things cannot be ensured. Because when we are digitizing, digitizing the entire process, the document get digitized, the um, privacy is ensured with time barrier that the viewing can be up till 30 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, one year and confidentiality in a peer-to-peer -peer network. That is as far as my understanding. Okay, just I can add some points, uh, consider as a government servant. Uh, regarding these three issues, confidentiality, privacy, and authenticity. Is, it, uh, is the blockchain the only option? Or other, at still now, there are lot, lots of other tools uh, which we can use to ensure our privacy, ensure our confidentiality, and authenticity. Maybe blockchain is the another option 
which is a better option. For example, uh, if we use our passport copy in photocopier shop and we can, uh, we can share with some, uh, the photocopier can share with, but it doesn't mean that we are, uh, we are, uh, uh, we are violating this pri uh, privacy rules and regulations. For example, this person, he is not well aware of the, of the confidentiality, aware of the privacy. In the legal process, in, in a government office or any other, uh, uh, any other recognized environment, they must, be, they must maintain privacy, they must maintain confidentiality and also the authenticity. For example, there are diff different uh, legal documents in different countries. Some the Data Protection Act to ensure the privacy, or other uh, acts in different countries to ensure the uh, confidentiality. And authenticity is uh, one of the, the core values of all government officials, particularly, and those who are uh, providing services. Now the question is how to ensure that is authenticated. So this option, uh, I myself is not very well aware of this blockchain technology uh, in the technological view. I can, uh, I am not sure that whether these three, it is the only options, or there are some other, other technology which also can provide to support these areas. But I, from the discussions, I know that blockchain is one of the main, one of the most important tools to ensure these three areas. And governments support legal, behind this one of the most important thing is the legal instruments. So if we ensure, if we <coughs> would like to ensure all this authenticity, accuracy, confidentiality, we must, uh, we must uh, uh, support it by a legal instrument. Otherwise, if somebody violates this, if in, so what, would be the, what would be the next stage? Who will take the responsibility? There are lots of questions. And I think that we need to analyze all these pros and cons. Uh, what would be the risk analysis? Is it the only, uh, just uh, my question, is it, the, is it the, the, the technique that ensure all this 100% or is there any loopholes? Is there any challenges? It can also be mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question is raised about the uh, about the validator. Who will be the validator? And what is the, the confidentiality? Uh, perspective um, and um, uh, some other issues. I think uh, the beauty of blockchain, security of blockchain depends on some basic uh, criteria. There's uh, one is uh, time stamping and the issuing authority Issuing authority in case of uh, traditional system, uh, we issue black and white uh, hard copy certificate. Same authority is uh, issuing uh, certificate now, uh, Bangladesh Computer Council in blockchain technology. And we introduce all of the features of distributed ledger technology. One is time stamping, we introduce time stamping in issuing our uh, certificate. And I think this is a successful project in Bangladesh for the first time. And there is a scope to replicate it to other academia. And finally, can I ask a question please? Uh, Mr. Lawrence Ma. Please, please, yeah. Uh, as we know, uh, introducing blockchain technology in a wide and public network where huge transactions is necessary. 
uh, there are some challenges still now. Yeah. And uh, as you are a uh, resource person or uh, expert in this field, we and audience would like to know what will be the solutions the expert thinking about to solve all of these challenges in blockchain application field. Thank you. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe I just say, I think um, you have public chain, right, which is so-called permissionless and your permission to use a private chain. In terms of the throughput, like uh, obviously the public chain um, have some issue, right? You look at Ethereum. Of course, they say they're coming with Ethereum 2.0, but but I haven't seen them yet. And also, um, those who claim to be very fast, like uh, those public chain, do, I don't know many. They, when you look at it carefully, you find that they're actually quite centralized. They are not really decentralized. Probably decision are made by a few nodes. Now, of course, uh, you go to the private chain, you can definitely uh, achieve much more transaction per second. I mean, the kind of transaction you probably want to be thousands of tens of thousands, like this is like a per second, like this is how a private car uh, can handle this kind of transaction. A uh, private chain can handle that, uh, but then the question becomes like, you use a private chain, and people will question, can, uh, can we really, really trust the private chain because uh, the private chain is only controlled by a few people, what have been, they collaborate. What can I do? So there's some people I think, for me, I think maybe after we need a hybrid, a public plus a private, meaning that certain thing you, you, you privately okay, you determine, but then you might at some point write this thing to a public chain. Otherwise, if you don't do that, like how do you, how, like, I'll give an example, let's say people talk about uh, if there was blockchain, maybe we can avoid some of the financial crisis in 2008. Right, when people don't know what's going on, people don't really know what the exposure. But I will also ask I mean, if somehow if you have blockchain at the time, is it on the private chain? Maybe the bank will collapse, will collude and try to fool the, 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 the central bank. Right? Maybe they will, right? otherwise they will face heavy penalty. If, 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 because if together with private chain, as long as all the participants agree, work together, they can rewrite the chain where you can do that. So the fact that people say that the chain is immutable is not quite true because everyone work together, they can rewrite it. Um, public chain is very difficult, right? Because it's very difficult to rewrite the, um, say, the Ethereum uh, chain, or because you need a lot of resources. So for me, maybe perhaps the may, maybe a hybrid, maybe. Um, also, the other thing I uh, let me put a, a more provocative question is that, it, which is not I'm not the only one saying it, but there are other, also other people saying it is that blockchain certainly is a uh, useful part for certain things, uh, preventable spending. But for something like identity, right? Um, the the way I look at it is the what blockchain really provides is something I call global ordering of the event, right? You order the event globally, so everyone knows which event come first, and then so when, once you have this ordering, that you cannot expect. But does something like identity need that kind of very strong kind of ordering? Maybe if we don't need this kind of strong ordering or strong as a requirement. You, you don't really need a block, block, uh, block, blockchain. Immutability can be achieved by other things. I mean, the fact is immutable, you just write some hash. You don't need a blockchain to do that. People have done that. Things, things like the uh, distributed hash table or IPFS. The blockchain system when you require something like what I call global ordering. And this is very strong. And that's the price to pay for that, right? Because you go over because all the efficiency come in, right? Because you have everyone agree. So, so therefore, there are people already are saying that uh, is do we need that? And also, the other thing why why do people uh, raise this thing, especially for identity, is that people don't want to have some called vendor locking, meaning that a lot of the uh, then solution that people are providing on the blockchain is yeah, you use the identity, you somehow you lock into that particular chain. And let's say you lock into, uh, say, the Ethereum chain. And that will sort of violate uh, the principle of a uh, authority of portability. Okay, that will happen if I'm not satisfied with this chain. I want to bring this to the other chain, right? This is something that people have been asking. Um, so uh, for identity, I mean, do we really need a, you know, I'm not saying, but, but blockchain is, it's good, but it's necessary, right? it's necessary. 
for this particular application. For certain applications, yes, to prevent double spending, this is very powerful. So this is something that people have been voicing out lately. In, in the first generation of a lot of these identity systems, they are mostly based on blockchain. But now people have a second thought uh, because of some of the questions about portability, interoperability, and uh, and then whether you, people, you think deep down, whether we need such a strong system. Um, so I want to see what, how, how speaker think about this, yeah. So when so so uh, um, I think some of you asked whether we really need blockchain. Yes, for the identity. So people are also asking, do we really need blockchain for a, a identity system? Uh, I mean, if I may just you know go back to your first thing, yeah. that, you know whether there is a conflict between authenticity, privacy, and confidentiality. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's the point you were trying to raise. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, uh, you have to uh, When I say conflict, I mean, it's impossible to achieve all three at the highest level at the same time. That's the conflict. True, true. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, you see, you see, um, these are all relative. I mean, authenticity, you know, of course, and confidentiality and privacy, of course. I mean, if yeah. you, I mean, you know, these are all relative issues. I mean, if you have want to have full privacy, yeah, yeah. Maybe I just maybe let me just add one point: is that the highest kind of privacy is you don't communicate with anyone. Then you have the absolute privacy. Yeah, you. you but that's that's not that's not useful. Right? You pick. You don't communicate. Yeah. Right. That's that's very private. Right? You don't communicate with anyone. Right. You don't go go to the internet. That's very private. No one knows what's going on. But that is not useful. Right. So once you start communicating, right, you lose some privacy. Right. When you start communicating. So that's why it's impossible to achieve all three at the same time. That's, what, that's my, that's sort of how, how it comes. No, no, sure. Where it comes from, yeah, yeah. Sure, but I think, yeah. I think you know, we're not really dealing yeah. with, with absolutes. But you see, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not dealing with absolutes. And of course, yeah. this is an ongoing thing. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, now coming back to your, your point that, you know, people saying that blockchain is not the solution for all. I mean, it's fully agreed. I mean, technology, yeah will have its limitations, will have its, but you see, I mean, it's like, it's like if I have, if I'm open to innovation, open to ideas, then we can get the best out of the system. I mean, how mm -hmm. you implement a system, innovation right. in that, your, your honesty in that is, on. if right. you approach internet with a negative frame of mind, you will see only the dark net. But if you mm -hmm. approach internet with a, you know, with, with a fair mind, I mean, of course, there are so many. So I think, you know, I mean, it is, it is a fact of life that, you know, how we look at things. Now, I mean, blockchain, you know, we don't have to have blockchain for blockchain's sake. We don't have to have, you know, the traceability, the provenance and the credentialing. These are the traits of business we have sought long before blockchain. Long before right. even computerization, true. everybody true, wanted true. the truth. Everybody wanted yeah. the authenticity. Right. Everyone right. Right. wanted right. Right. traceability. If I was right. you know, 100 years ago, I would still like to know the fish I'm eating, is it right. you know, good fish? Right. So, right. I mean, of course, but with advent of time, with advent of, you know, the complex systems that we have, 7 billion people, all internet connected, I mean, there is a tool now which allows you and of course, you see, I mean, I'm a, uh, I think if I, if I call myself a fundamentalist blockchainer, it's a public blockchain, which is really the true essence of blockchain. Because if you have a private, it's an amalgamation, but you know, we have to, we have to accept that because in order to, because we cannot negate everything that is existing and then jump onto a new world. So, you know, we have to take the new, we have to take the old, the tradition as it is, and then you know, transform ourselves into a better world. So I think mm -hmm. the tools that we have, I mean, it's like computerization. We don't have to do computerization for the computerization's sake. We have to find right. out what we need, what, well, what is the need, and then if blockchain, if other technologies fit in, then we embrace that. I think there lies the wisdom, there lies mm -hmm. our innovation, there lies our right. intellect. There lies mm -hmm. our, you know, whether we pass or fail. 
I mean, we have right. to be substantial. We have to be very thorough and deep, not very superficial. I think right. the crisis Absolutely. in this world is superficiality mm. across the right. world, right. from USA yeah. to everywhere. So I think, you know, and of course, you know, unfortunately, uh, uh, we have policymakers, we have administrators, you know, all have different backgrounds. I'm not blaming anyone, but you know, so the only thing, only common denominator is that you have a open mind, you have a good intention of improving things. Anything short of that, of course, will be an hindrance to progress. Mm -hmm. But you know, mm -hmm. but even then, that is not an issue because if more Byzantine, if three out of four people push in one direction, the bad actor will also follow suit. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. blockchain has to be taken as a, it's, it's a tool, fine. But you know, whether we need it or not, it has to be organically demanded, whether our mm -hmm. system needs it. I mean, for example, this country, we want emancipation of 16, 17, 18 crore people. For this, we need mm -hmm. good governance. We, 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 we have to achieve SDG. For need good governance, leave no one behind. We need good governance, good management, right. healthy, legal Absolutely. System, yep. healthy legal yeah. system. The individual businessman has to contribute to the exchequer, but it is not, it is not right to burden a company with unclear laws, mm -hmm. which may be existing in countries like ours. Tax laws, mm -hmm. VAT laws, that laws, you know, so mm -hmm. it is, it is anti-human right. Yeah. So, you know, we need to be working on this. So in order to improve the lot of people, I mean, we have to be people centric, whatever solutions we think is appropriate. Right. And if it is, you know, something to do with blockchain, then you must embrace it. And of course, you know, we can, we can talk about many things, but technology yeah. we cannot ignore or negate. I mean, we can, you know, think of many things, but you know, technology we have yeah. to embrace. I mean, and so, yes. Uh, there's not much debate about that. How we implement yeah. it, how we okay. AI and IoT and all that, we could be easy to exploit people or to enhance people's lives. So, you know, that's the choice we have. Ask yeah, you that's guys. the challenge coming out. I mean, how to make sure the adaptation, I mean, that is the thing we have to, that is the, the, the challenge coming up. I mean, we have all these things on how, 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 why, how to convince people to adopt the technology and also. That, that will be something that yeah, yeah sure. uh, we we need to work on that. So um, thank you. I, I think now uh, in that time, I think uh, I think we will sort of a uh, we we'll have a Q and A section coming up. Um, so perhaps we can start the Q and A session now. Let's see if people have any questions from the audience. They want to ask the speaker. Thank you. I know how, how it's going to be handled is that someone will just read out the questions or... Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. We, can, uh, we see that uh, there, um, for uh, private or public blockchain uh, frameworks, uh, there are not many uh, structured courses or tutorials uh, uh, um, offering from our government or uh, ICD divisions and uh, the course offered from uh, international organizations, uh, these are very costly. So is there plans uh, ICT division to um, offer uh, free courses uh, or training sessions for blockchain developers uh, in uh, private or public any domains uh, so that, that we can learn and, uh, you know, um, Thanks for your question. Uh, uh, at the moment, I think we don't, uh, we are not offering any, any free courses in our BKIT, the training institute. But one, uh, but uh, from IC division, we are providing different supports. Uh, for example, innovation fund, uh, scholarship funds for uh, MPhil and PhD. So if anybody interested, to pursue his uh, research degree in blockchain or any um, any uh, emerging technologies, 
they can apply uh, to get the funds from ICT division. So we have got, uh, as you know that in ICT division we are uh, providing funds, innovation funds and um, scholarship funds from ICT divisions each year. And we um, advertise it on our website. So if you're interested for this. And in future, as you know that we are doing different um, Shek Kamal ICT incubator centers, there we will uh, provide training to uh, and to create in, uh, entrepreneurs in uh, ICT sectors, focusing all these new technologies, new innovations. And also we are establishing Sheikh Hasina Institute of Frontier Technologies, where we'll focus our all training courses uh, on these areas, uh, focusing uh, in fourth industrial regulations. So thank you very much. You see, I think, you know, I mean, if, well, if I was you, I mean, you have to look at things in two ways. I mean, government may have a perspective and you have a perspective. If I was you, I wouldn't, I cannot control what government does. I cannot control what Bangladesh really does. But I can control what I can do. And in this day and age, if you have a burning desire to learn anything, it is there. If the student in you rises, the teacher will appear through internet, through Google, because you see, if you have the, so developing that desire, that curiosity is, is the essential thing which will drive you. So you as an individual could, could actually learn many things through the net. I mean, there are paid courses and unpaid courses. There are blogs, whatever. But it's not big amount of money. Uh, sometimes there are 10, 15 dollar courses. But you know, but of course, m maybe it needs a lot of bit of research. Would be helpful if it was a structured course. But you see, you as an individual, if you wait for these things to happen or that thing to happen, life is not unlimited. So as an individual, my 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 suggestion would be, you do your own research. And if you have a burning design, of course, they say the government gives you gives grant for you to study, so you can avail that. But you know, let's not wait for what. And you know, I'm not a believer in government doing things. Government should not do anything. It's the private sector, the training centers, or the universities. They should do it. I mean, uh, then then we have an infrastructure where there are people who are providers of education. If government wants to do things on their own. Then of course you know I mean, it, well, well, every everything has a natural ability. A big ship has a ability to sail stable. A small ship has a ability to swiggle. So I mean, governments its natural ability is not to give most efficient service. I mean, of course, government give policies, government give regulations. So as an individual, your wisdom, your your take. I think I suggest that you should. If you have a desire to learn, you know, there are so many ways to learn. And of course, you, know, you can find employment across the world. So, but you know, from a government perspective, it's different. If I was government, I would like to see that you know, there is a facilitating environment so that the youngsters can learn. There is a facilitating environment so the youngsters can experiment, burn their fingers doing things. But if that's not forthcoming, then you don't, don't complain, don't wait. You just do your own thing. Maybe I, I, I say a few words uh, for this question. Actually, there are quite a lot of free, very good material on the internet. Um, for example, a lot, a lot of the like Coursera or some of these, uh, you, you read all the, you don't take the certificate, it's free. Um, also, another good source uh, I suggest is, um, I think all the blockchain like uh, Ethereum, uh, Hyperledger Fabric and Corda, they have very good online tutorial. Uh, for example, in my company, uh, uh, we do a lot of hyperledger or order. The, the first thing I, I will ask my uh, employee is to go over the online tutorial very carefully, and that, that's a good starting point. And it's free. Yeah. Uh, you spend a few weeks and go. I mean, you have to do all the exercise or everywhere, but, um, and that's how you start. Start right. I know. And the other thing I I, I always tell people is that. Uh, taking courses is one thing. I mean, to really understand and learn, you have to do some project. And I think hopefully, maybe um, uh, somehow, maybe some of the private uh, sector maybe can. I don't know. 
uh, on wage. Like, like in, for example, in Hong Kong, we, 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 we give internship. I mean, I think that's where uh, the, the students will get to learn and actually do some projects. Oh, okay. Uh, any, anyone um, have more questions? Please, I mean, um, if you have questions, it's, it's a good opportunity to ask the, uh, the, the speaker. Uh, thank you, sir, for the session. Yes, I have a question. If we take all the documents in our life cycle as a citizen in this country, then we can see that but uh, birth certificate is the first genesis of the whole block cycle, if you consider all the documents. But right now, in our country, the, all the, still the major population of our country is not affiliated with the digitalization. How can we just implement a uh, block cycle in the long term? It, uh, because as a citizen, we need to consider this as well to educate the major populati population in our country. Thank you. That's the question, sir. Yeah, hello. I mean, you're saying that, you know, of course, there is a large body of people who do not have, you know, that, that's, 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 that's absolutely true. Now, you see, um, I mean, blockchain, if it leads to good governance, good management of the country, waste-free public finance, that will lead to an overall economic environment in which the people will benefit from it. If you have a, you know, evolve into a system where all birth are registered, I mean, not today, but, you know, in course of time, then of course, like we have, I mean, NID. So, I mean, blockchain implementation in Bangladesh, we don't have to wait till everyone, all 16 crore of people come to a, you know, a common platform of prosperity or whatever. I mean, it's a, it's a very difficult process. It, of course, you know, progress. So I think that should not stop us from embracing technology, embracing blockchain into areas where we can affect efficiency. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, there, there are people in this country who have done extremely well through technology. So those are inspirations. There are people, there are government has done extremely well with digitalization. More could be done, but so these are steps. So, I mean, your, uh, your point is absolutely valid. I mean, we have, to be up, we have to be attentive to the most vulnerable of person. As I mentioned, SDG, leave no one behind. To give people the right of opportunity, not the right to, right of opportunity, whether you are in Dhaka or in Khagrachiri. So there needs a good governance, a spread out governance, a collaborative governance, a decentralized governance. If everything happens in Dhaka, then all the other, all the other. So, I mean, through a collaborative blockchain is a tool for collaborative management. So that's how I think blockchain is, I mean, relevant. But your point is right. You know, we must be cognizant of the hapless situation of the majority people in this country, of course. Thank you. Okay, um, anyone have any more questions? Chilo additional secretary, sir, or Hoche, director BCC, J. Amra Alojona Kulam, J. Government, Amadir certification, or key, J. BCC, J. BCC, take a J. certification Gula Dahoi, it a shop blockchain and Ecora. To actually, government at Pokotaki, Apatoto, Edhorneri, Arki, attacked up Jetta already implemented. Kinto future, actually, key government at Pokotaki, Arkiki steps as a 
যেটার উপরে ডিপেন্ড করে আমরা আসলে ড্রিম দেখতে পারতাম অথবা স্বপ্ন দেখতে পারতাম যে আসলে ব্লকচেনে আমরা কিভাবে আগাইতে পারবো ব্লকচেনে আর কি ব্লকচেনের উপরে গভর্নমেন্টের ফার্দার স্টেপসগুলো কি যদি একটু ক্লিয়ার করতেন ধন্যবাদ আপনার প্রশ্নের জন্য প্রথম কথা হচ্ছে যে গভর্নমেন্টের কাজের ধরন এক ধরনের প্রাইভেট সেক্টরের কাজের ধরন এক ধরনের বাট গভর্নমেন্টের একটা বড় কাজ হচ্ছে যে সবাইকে নিয়েই গভর্নমেন্ট কাজ করতে হয় এটা আইসি ডিভিশন প্রাইভেট সেক্টর আইটি আইটি এস ইন্ডাস্ট্রি সব তো আমরা যেটা আমাদের একটা বিষয়ে আমি একটু ব্যাখ্যা দিতে চাই এখানে দ্যাট আমরা আইসি ডিভিশন থেকে আমাদের মাননীয় উপদেষ্টা এবং মাননীয় প্রতিমন্ত্রী আমাদের ওনাদের যে নির্দেশনা আমরা কিন্তু কোনো একটা বিষয় আপনার আপনারা জানেন যে আমরা ডিজিটাল বাংলাদেশ ভিশন টোয়েন্টি টোয়েন্টি ওয়ান যেটা যেটা ইতিমধ্যে আমরা বাস্তবায়ন করেছি এবং এখন ভিশন টোয়েন্টি ফর্টি ওয়ানের দিকে আমরা যাচ্ছি তো আমাদের একটা স্ট্র্যাটেজি হচ্ছে যে যে কোনো বিষয়ে এনভায়রনমেন্ট ক্রিয়েট করতে হলে একটা পজিটিভ এনভায়রনমেন্ট ক্রিয়েট করার জন্য আমরা প্রথমে স্ট্র্যাটেজি করি স্ট্র্যাটেজি যে লং রান আমরা কী কী কাজ করব কোন কোন বিষয়ে আমাদের ফোকাস দেওয়া উচিত কে কোন কাজ করবে কোন ইত্যাদি তাহলে এখানে কিন্তু স্ট্র্যাটেজিতে কোনো ধরনের কোনো রেগুলেটরি বিষয় আসে না মানুষের কোনো সরকারের ধরবে কাউকে কোনো ধরনের ইয়ে করবে দায়বদ্ধতা সৃষ্টি করবে সেটা না বরং স্ট্র্যাটেজি হচ্ছে এনভায়রনমেন্ট ক্রিয়েট করা আমরা গভর্নমেন্ট আইসি ডিভিশন থেকে আমরা বিভিন্ন বিষয়ে এ ধরনের স্ট্র্যাটেজি করেছি আপনারা দেখেছেন কি না জানি না আমাদের ওয়েবসাইটে দেওয়া আছে ব্লক চেঞ্জ স্ট্র্যাটেজি টোয়েন্টি টোয়েন্টি এবং এই স্ট্র্যাটেজিটা ডিটেলস বিভিন্ন সেক্টরে আমরা কীভাবে ব্লক চেঞ্জকে প্রয়োগ করতে পারি এবং ব্লক চেনের মাধ্যমে আমরা কীভাবে উপকৃত হতে পারি জনগণ উপকৃত হতে পারে মিনিস্ট্রিগুলো উপকৃত হতে পারে সেখানে কিন্তু সুন্দর বর্ণনা দেওয়া আছে আমি দেখি আমি সংক্ষেপে হয়তো এখানে একটু এক মিনিট একটু বলতে পারি একটা শুধু এখানে যে ধরেন ল্যান্ড অ্যাপ্লিকেশনে কীরকম হবে ফাইন্যান্সিয়াল অ্যাপ্লিকেশন কীভাবে হবে এক্সপার্টাইজ অ্যাপ্লিকেশন এগ্রিকালচার হেলথ কেয়ার ব্যাংকিং জুডিশিয়ারি অল সেক্টরসের একটা অ্যানালিস দেওয়া আছে যে কীভাবে সেখানে ব্লক চেনটা ইউজ করা যাবে তারপরে সেখানে আপনার এই যে গোলস মানে শর্ট টার্মস টেন গোলস মিডিয়াম টার্মস নাইন গোলস এবং নন লং টার্ম চার গোলস এই গোলসগুলো দিয়ে তারপরে তার এগেনস্টে থার্টি সিক্স অ্যাকশন প্ল্যান করা আছে এই অ্যাকশনটা এই গোলগুলো অর্জন করতে হলে কি 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 এই অ্যাকশন প্ল্যানগুলো কে কে বাস্তবায়ন করবে দীর্ঘমেয়াদী শর্ট টার্ম মিড টার্ম লং টার্ম তাহলে আমাদের একটা তাহলে বুঝতে পারতেছেন যে আমরা লং টার্ম আমাদের অলরেডি আমরা আইসিটি ডিভিশনতে আমরা যেহেতু আমরা ডিজিটাল বাংলাদেশ বাস্তবায়নে আমরা নিবিড়ভাবে কাজ করেছি এবং যেহেতু আমরা ভিশন টোয়েন্টি ফোর্টি ওয়ান বাস্তবায়নের জন্য একটা ইনোভেটিভ অ্যান্ড নলেজ বেজ ইকোনমি গড়ার গড়ে তোলার জন্য আমরা কাজ করে যাচ্ছি তো আমরা প্রতিটা ক্ষেত্রে এভাবে স্ট্র্যাটেজি প্রথমে ডেভেলপ করি এবং স্ট্র্যাটেজির পরে আমরা যখন মনে করি না এখন সেক্টর সমূহের একটা এক নজরদারি কিংবা এক ধরনের দায়িত্বগুলো নির্ধারণ করে দেওয়া উচিত তখন আমরা পলিসি করি পলিসি তারপরে যখন আমরা মনে করি হ্যাঁ পলিসি এখন একটা একটা সুনির্দিষ্টভাবে দায়বদ্ধতা সৃষ্টি করা উচিত তখন আমরা করি অ্যাক্ট তো একটা কথা আমি আই উড লাইক টু রিপিট দ্যাট আই সি উই ডোন্ট ওয়ান্ট টু ইম্পোজ এনি এনি লিগাল বার্ডেন ইন দ্য ইন দ্য ফ্লারিশিং সেক্টরস টু ক্রিয়েট এনি প্যানিক টু দ্য সোসাইটি অ্যাট ফার্স্ট উই জাস্ট ফর্মুলেট স্ট্র্যাটেজি দেন পলিসি অ্যান্ড দেন অ্যাক্ট ইট ইজ ইট ইজ আওয়ার স্টাইল ইট ইজ আওয়ার সিস্টেম ইন আইসিটি ডিভিশন so as you as you mentioned you asked that what so in our in our strategy we have mentioned what would be 10 years our projection uh, we, where we will focus and also we have de devised action plan and next time as we are going to going to formulate uh, our ict policy next policy as you know that there is a ict policy it's uh, ict policy 2018 So in ICT policy 2018, it, there are lots of goals they are um, considering short, uh, medium, and long term. Long term, it was, um, uh, it was consider, considered till 2041, vision 2041, to achieve our uh, developed nation status. And also uh, medium term was uh, 2031 SDG goals. And uh, 20, the, uh, the, the, um, our one, first one was Uh, focusing on this um, our uh, graduation so these three uh, timeline we followed for short medium and long in our ICT policy but at the moment uh, government is thinking ICT division think is that we have to 
we may ch need to change as uh, there is new Vision 2041 document has been published and it was declared by the Prime Minister. And there are lots of issues uh, forthcoming and there are lots of emerging technologies. So all this, um, considering all these uh, new innovations, emerging technologies and uh, government policies, uh, uh, we are thinking to formulate another policy. And in that policy also, also about this type of innovation, uh, this type of uh, emerging technologies such as uh, AI, uh, big data, uh, blockchain, all this will be uh, properly formulated. So I think uh, you have got your answer. Thank you. Okay, my colleague, uh, Mr. Ehsan. Uh, I replicate <laughs> তৈরি এটিকে সর্বাত্মক সহায়তার জন্য এবং এটি একটি মুভমেন্ট আকারে মুভমেন্ট আকারে সৃষ্টি হতে পারে যে বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়গুলো সার্টিফিকেশনটা অন্তত ব্লকচেইনে করবে এটি এখন বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়গুলো যেহেতু অটোনোমাস তাদের সিদ্ধান্তের উপরে ডিপেন্ড করছে আর সরকার বা শিক্ষা মন্ত্রণালয় যেটি পারে শিক্ষা বোর্ডগুলোকে এটি নিতে পারবে কিন্তু সেটি অনেক প্রায় বিশ তিরিশ লক্ষ সার্টিফিকেশন পারিয়ার করতে হবে এটি এটি অনেক বড় প্রজেক্ট এবং সিদ্ধান্তের ব্যাপার আছে কস্ট ইনভলভমেন্ট আছে এর মধ্যে এবং এটি ছাড়াও যে আমরা বাংলাদেশ কম্পিউটার কাউন্সিল যেটি করেছি এটি ছাড়াও যে আমরা ল্যান্ড ম্যানেজমেন্ট জুডিশিয়ারি এ জুডিশিয়ারি একটা প্রজেক্টই আছে সেখানে যে জাজমেন্ট বিভিন্ন ডিসিশন কেসের বিভিন্ন ধাপগুলো সেগুলোকে যাতে ব্লক চেনে করা যায় সে ধরনের চিন্তা ভাবনাও করা যেতে পারে এটির স্কোপ আছে অনেক জায়গায় স্কোপ আছে আর কর্মসংস্থানের জায়গাটিতে আমি বেশি অ্যাম্পাসিস দিতে চাই যেটির বেনিফিটটা আমরা এই মুহূর্ত থেকেই হারনেস করতে পারি তো এই হচ্ছে সরকারের পলিসি আমরা আমাদের সিনিয়র আলোচক বলেছেন যে চেষ্টা পলিসি সদিচ্ছার অভাব নেই কিন্তু ব্যাপার হচ্ছে আমাদের রেডিনেস আমাদের ক্যাপাবিলিটি ক্যাপাসিটি সেই পর্যায়ে ধীরে ধীরে যেতে হবে যেটি আসছে যে যে আমার এক বার্থ রেজিস্ট্রেশন থেকে থ্রু আউট দ্য লাইফ আমার সমস্ত ডকুমেন্ট কি করে আমি ব্লক চেন একসাথে করতে পারি চাইতে পারি সেটিও একটি অনেক বড় প্রজেক্ট নেওয়ার ব্যাপার আছে অনেক বড় ডিসিশন নেওয়ার ব্যাপার আছে তবে এই মুহূর্তে আমরা যেহেতু আমরা একটি প্রজেক্টে সফল হয়েছি সেটিকে আমরা তৈরি আছি এবং বিভিন্ন বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়গুলোকে আমরা এটিকে এটিতে আমরা সহায়তা করতে পারি শুধু অপেক্ষায় আছি যে হ্যাঁ দাবি আপনাদের পক্ষ থেকে উঠুক আমরা এটি করব ধন্যবাদ um today we we um uh, with all these speak distinguished speaker we have gone through a very interesting i think a very very important topic because i think a lot of people are saying that um for the digital economy or like what we call web3 the identity digital identity credentials is going to be one of the most crucial part of it and indeed um because when you do any transaction on you know uh, online you need to know who the other person is or whether he has the credential so this is absolutely the most important again and today we touch on some of the very interesting points from this from the speaker and i'm sure uh, unfortunately we don't have time in this so uh, hopefully we have more in the, in the future we have more opportunity to come back to this important topic again so um once again i would thank uh, all the four distinguished speaker uh and the amen mr rabani and mr Pavas, and mr Kyo. um let me let's give us a um a round of applause to all the uh, to all these speakers. Okay, thank you very much. And um, I will want to pass to uh, to uh, Mr. Saman. I think he is going to administer some kind of pop quiz and where there will be prizes given, I, I, I think. Okay, thank you very much.
Hello. Um, thank you to all the distinguished speakers. It was an amazing seminar. Uh, the seminar was on credentials in blockchain, uh, powered by ADN Telecom. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lawrence Ma, all the way from Hong Kong. Uh, thank you to um, Mr. Amin, additional secretary, uh, Atik, Atik Uncle, Atik Sir, for uh, Managing Director of Computers Limited, um, Esanul Parvis Sir, Director, BCC, and Esanul, Esanul Hawk Sir, uh, CEO of ADN Telecom. Um, we're going to do a, a pop quiz now. Um, if, if, if there's no rush, I'm going to do a pop quiz. 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 Is that better? So please don't leave. I'm going to do a pop quiz. We'll give away a few gifts as well. So I'm going to do a pop quiz. Okay. Thank you. We'll do a quick pop quiz. Um, questions, Gula ki amra. Sir, apna the theke amra kichu questions nite pari. Just random questions. Ja amra jeta ne discuss kore chhi. Ra question korbo crowded jono. Je aga hat tulbe. Je answer korbe. Apna if you satisfied with the answer, thale amra tade kichu price thi bo. Kya ke sir kya ke sir kuto jachen? To the audience, uh, my question, as we know, there are some safety securities in blockchain technology. 
Would you please? Anyone? Anyone can participate? Would you please uh, mention two safety measures? Those are used in blockchain technology to make it self-secured. Anyone, please? So two safety measures uh, used in uh, blockchain uh, to ensure security. Uh, uh, one is uh, uh, public key infrastructure or public private cryptography uh, by which um, every, uh, a, every participant in the blockchain is known to uh, each other. And another uh, security measure uh, by, uh, we, we can use in blockchain, which is uh, access control. Uh, it's an um, access control mechanism uh, by which um, um, we can, uh, we can um, dist distinguish the rights between who have, uh, in, in a network, uh, every participant does not have the same rights. A different participant have the different kind of, uh, kinds of rights. Uh, so uh, by access control mechanism, we can decide uh, in which pi participant ha have wh which kind of rights in the network for updating the network. So that's the two points from mine. Thank you. Uh, our time is stepping and hash value hash functioning in, uh, of each block. Those are also safety measures, especially time is stepping. Make it protected from uh, hacking or copying or tampering. Oh, thank you. Uh, so many safety measures are there. Thank you. Hello. I think, are you? Uh. We'll go for the next question. How many parts of uh, information in each block in a blockchain? How many parts of information in each block of a blockchain? Previous, uh, previous hash, next hash, and what's your hash? Sir? Can I repeat your answer? Sir, previous block hash, next block hash, and what's your hash? Anybody else? Hello. Achha, previous has, next has, time stamp, nonce, data, transaction, block number. That's all. Huh? <laughs> correct? Yes, that was correct. Come, come to the, please, stage your lesson. I'll be asking a very simple question. What is the most challenging block and what it is termed as? Genesis block, correct. 
Please come to the stage. সামনে <laughs> 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 তার জন্য একটা জোরে করতালি পেতে পারি আমরা আমরা জানি যে ব্লক চেনের উদ্ভাবক কে এনিমন আচ্ছা আপু একটু দাঁড়ান ব্লক চেনের উদ্ভাবক কে হ্যাঁ একটু শুনতে চাচ্ছি হ্যাঁ সাতোশি নাকা মতো অ্যাকচুয়ালি আমার একটা কোয়েশ্চেন ছিল না আমি জানতে চাচ্ছিলাম যে ইথিরিয়াম ব্লক চেনের উদ্ভাবক কে এখন আচ্ছা না আমি কোয়েশ্চেনটা ট্রিক করে বলছি যে আমরা সবাই জানি যে ব্লক চেনের উদ্ভাবক কে কিন্তু আমরা কি জানি যে ইথিরিয়াম ব্লক চেনের উদ্ভাবক কে হাত উঠাতে হবে ভাইয়া হাত তুলেছেন Congratulations. All right, we have five John winners, so we will give our speakers the prizes. Um, I'll pass the mic to uh, Mr. Esanul Hawk, CEO of ADN Telecom, to just say a few more words, and then we'll finish. Thank you very much, everyone, for this wonderful seminar on uh, blockchain, credential in blo uh, blockchain. Uh, we are proud to be a part of it, and uh, this would be just a beginning, uh, because uh, we are just overcoming COVID days, and we have overcome the COVID days. I guess many more to go in the coming days. So let's, uh, let's be connected, and uh, we'll be there uh, uh, from ADN Telecom and ADN Group uh, for embracing new technologies. Thank you very much. আচ্ছা আমাদের বুথেও হচ্ছে যে পপ কুইজ হবে সো আপনারা ওইখানে কাইন্ডলি জয়েন করবেন বুথ ভিজিট করবেন বুথেও পপ কুইজগুলো হবে